Hello everybody uh, and welcome to this video. Today we are going to take a look at Tansu application service for Kubernetes. Uh, in this video we are going to cover a brief installation overview on how to deploy Tansu application service on top of a Kubernetes cluster. It's a very simple installation. We basically need a Kubernetes cluster um, and we create a bunch of configuration files and then run an installation script. And what that's going to do is deploy all the task control plane components like the UAA server, the build services, the uh, CF API as containers onto their respective namespaces within the Kubernetes cluster. And towards the end of the video, we're going to point to the CF API that is deployed as a container on Kubernetes um, as our Tansu application service API. So let's begin. Now to begin with, we need a Kubernetes cluster, and I'm going to use Tanzu Kubernetes Grid Integrated Solution, or as it was formerly called as Pivotal Container Service, or PKS, uh, to create a Kubernetes cluster. Now, um, just a couple of things to keep in mind when we create this cluster. Um, the cluster has to have a minimum of five nodes, and each node need to have at least 8 GB of RAM size and at least 32 GB of disk space. So in my case, I'm defining this as a medium plan, um, and I'm going to use that. Also, we'll need to enable privilege mode for that Kubernetes cluster, So because we're going to use or we're going to deploy containers um, like Istio, etc., that will need privileged access within the cluster. Apart from that, um, uh, very standard st uh, setup needed. So I already have um, uh, a PKS cluster created. So let's log into that. Uh, let's take a look at that cluster. It's a medium plan cluster, so I made sure I have five nodes. Now let's take a look at the workloads running within that cluster. So as you see, the cluster has very basic namespaces like the cube system, PKS system, and then there's not much uh, workload running. Let's take a look at the pods that are running over here. You'll see again, we have few workloads um, that are very generic system uh, workloads um, like any other cluster would have. All right, so let's try to deploy Tanzu application service. Now, before we do that, we'll need a couple of components uh, pre-deployed uh, or some CLI tools pre-deployed. One is you'll need uh, kube cuddle so that we can target our Kubernetes cluster and talk to it. Another one you'll need is the Bosch CLI if you're using uh, auto-generated configurations. You'll also need um, a KPAC app and um, a bunch of other tools. So you'll need uh, things like KAP, uh, KBLD, and YTT deployed. These are tools to manage a Kubernetes cluster or talk to the cluster, and they're all uploaded to Pivnet. I've already downloaded them on my laptop, and I'm going to use that. Now, um, the installation process is pretty simple. What we're going to do is create a bunch of configuration uh, based on some of the specific parameters like the domain name that we want to use, etc., and then use those configuration parameters to run an installation script that will target this Kubernetes cluster and start deploying our Tanzu application service components. So let's first create the configuration file. I've already downloaded Tanzu application service uh, tar file and untarred it, so let's get into that directory. In, in this directory, the configuration values is where we are going to store all the config data into. Now, before you start a, uh, a deployment, another thing to keep in mind is that Kubernetes cluster should have a storage class. Because I'm using vSphere, I'll have to create a define a storage class. I've already done that, and there is a configuration file uh, that comes with um, Tanzu application service star file that you can use to deploy a storage class in vSphere. So this, the file looks like this. It's within the config optional folder. So that basically creates a thin disk based storage class for the cluster so we can start creating persistent volumes. Uh, I've already created a storage class um, using this file, so I'm good to go. Now let's start creating the configuration values. So I'm going to run a script that will automatically generate the values for me. 
and I'm going to use a domain that is going to be local to my setup. Store the values within um, the folder configuration values and deployment values.yaml file. Let's take a look at this file. So this file is nothing but it has a bunch of secrets and admin uh, order generated um, config data, certificate paths, things like that. Um, so it's pretty useful. It's also the file that will store your CF admin password. And this is what we'll need later on uh, when we want to talk to the CF API. Uh, so these were all the CF related um, uh, configurations that we developed. Now, apart from this, we'll need to provide tons of application service with two specific parameters. One is a system registry and one is an application registry. The system registry is where Tanzu Application Service will download all the CF system or the control plane component containers like UAA, the build service, KPAC, etc. And then the application registry is where it will um, the system will build containers for us using the build service. Now, typically the system service would be your PivNet uh, registry with uh, your PivNet username and password. And the application registry could be Harbor, GCP, uh, GCR.io, or any other uh, container registry. Uh, the configuration parameters for these will have to be provided, and it is in the same directory where we created the deployment values. So I've already created that and stored. So that's the app registry. You basically point your um, registry URL and then username and password. And similarly, the uh, system registry is going to po point to the PivNet portal. All right, so we have that figured out. And now we just have to go ahead and run the installation script for this. So we go to uh, bin install this entire directory as a config file. Now what's going to happen in the back end is um, the install script is going to talk to the Kubernetes cluster and it's going to start downloading a bunch of uh, container images uh, from PivNet for different control plane elements. And at the end of the install script, uh, we'll get uh, the CF API to talk to. Uh, the script usually takes around uh, five to 10 minutes to complete. All right, so the script has finished. Um, let's take a look at what all components are deployed in the Kubernetes cluster. Let's take a look at the namespaces we got. So you'll see now uh, the cluster has some more namespaces like CF system, CF workloads, Istio, KPAC, and build service. These were deployed by the script and they'll be storing different components Let's take a look at the pods that were deployed. So you'll see the CF system has the CF API server, um, FluentD for logging and the UAA components deployed. Similarly, other namespaces are going to hold different parts of the entire uh, CF subsystem. The next step is to talk to the CF API and to do so, um, there are two options. One is if you have deployed Tanzu application service on a Kubernetes cluster that can create a load balancing service type, then you'll see an Istio ingress gateway with an external IP address, and you point all your DNS records towards that. Or if you are deployed uh, onto a Kubernetes cluster without any load balancing services, then we need to fetch the external IP addresses for all the Kubernetes nodes. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, let's see, let's fetch the IP addresses. So these are the IPs I need to uh, create a DNS record, a wildcard DNS record to point to, um, so that I can talk to the CF API that is running on these um, nodes as a container. Now I've already done that, so I'm going to start using uh, the CF API. So first, let's talk to my API that was tas.vsphere.local. All right. 
Now to log in, we'll need to fetch the admin credentials, which will be stored in the configuration uh, folder that we created or we generated in the deployment values yaml. So this is our auth token to log in as admin. All right, so let's go ahead and log into the CF API. All right, so we are logged into Tanzu application service running on Kubernetes. Uh, we can go ahead and create organization and spaces and start pushing applications. We'll also enable the Docker uh, Diego flag. This is a temporary uh, solution for the beta release. And then go ahead and start creating an organization. So we created a test org and now we're going to create um, a space called test space within that org. All right, now we can simply target this and go ahead and do our CF push commands into this organization. So there you have it. We are now logged into the CF API uh, in Tanzu application service running on Kubernetes. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching.